Hi, I'm Curious Cass, and this is Curiosity Junkie. I'm on a mission to explore and share ways to manage, soothe, and understand trauma and the anxiety it creates, because anxiety over time can create some pretty serious health issues. And if you're like me, you want to live a long and healthy life. Thanks for tuning in and listening. My hope is that you are enjoying the podcast content as much as I'm enjoying creating it. If you'd like to support the show, please take a moment to like, subscribe, and share. It helps boost the podcast, and I greatly appreciate your support. You can also make a donation through PayPal or buy me a coffee. Links are in the description. Thanks again for your support. Now, let's jump into today's topic, Father's Day. Father's Day is a time for people to celebrate the men in their lives. For children, it is a day to show appreciation for their fathers and or father figures. For adults, it is a day to show how much they love and appreciate the hard work of the fathers and husbands in their lives. So how did Father's Day get started and what do you do on this day if you don't have a relationship with your father? Well, of course, curiosity got the best of me, and I turned to Wikipedia and psychology today to learn more, and here's what I found. From Wikipedia, in 1909, Sonora Smart Dodd, after attending a Mother's Day service in church, wanted to recognize her father, who was raising her and her five siblings alone, after losing their mother in childbirth. Local religious leaders supported the idea, and the first Father's Day was celebrated on June 19, 1910, the birth month of Dodd's father. In 1924, U.S. President Calvin Coolidge gave his support to the observance, and in 1966, President Lyndon B. Johnson issued a proclamation that recognized the day. It became a national holiday in 1972 when President Richard Nixon signed legislation designating the third Sunday of June as Father's Day. In addition to Father's Day, International Men's Day is celebrated in many countries on November 19th in honor of both men and boys. I'd like to wish a very happy Father's Day to my dad, Jerry Brown. I appreciate the relationship and conversations that we have today, Dad. I also want to say happy Father's Day to my son, Jacob Burton. I thoroughly enjoy watching you with your two boys playing in the yard. The love, compassion, and tenderness you show them is beautiful. And of course... A happy Father's Day to all the father figures and fathers of human children and non-human critters in their care. Father's Day reminds us about both the importance and the challenges of fatherhood. Fathers don't always enjoy the same glow of intimacy and admiration we give our moms. And even today, fathers have the cultural image of breadwinner, disciplinarian, and authority figure. Often, fathers feel the burden of their responsibilities, but are conditioned not to show it. This sometimes interferes with both their ability to express affection and our ability to recognize it. Luckily, our view of fatherhood is changing, and more fathers are involved in parenting in a very direct and intimate way. Some fathers now take paternity leave when a child is born, while others are staying home to raise their children. Today, we celebrate the dads who are hands-on, the dads who support us through difficult times, the dads who pushed us to do better and to be better. Thank you, dads everywhere. And now... I'd like to invite you to imagine what this day must feel like for someone who didn't grow up with a positive father or father figure, someone who has 
had a toxic or non-existent relationship with our father. I mean, let's face it. When we have a difficult or worse relationship with our dad, we can be filled with anxiety, unpleasant memories, and depression. All this is happening to us while our friends are celebrating with cards, parties, and gifts. It can remind us of the fathers we've loved and lost, fathers we never knew, fathers who left and never came back, and fathers who were abusive. This day of celebration, for some, can be a very difficult day. And it's a hard day to ignore because Father's Day ads are popping up everywhere. Personally, I have struggled with feelings of resentment, anxiety, and a bit of depression around Father's Day. I also have some wonderful childhood memories of time spent with my dad, and today we have a good relationship. For many years, I didn't have much of a relationship with my dad. My parents divorced when I was around four or five, and for several years after, I did accumulate some really great memories of weekends with my dad. My sisters and I spent many a night falling asleep listening to my dad play guitar while telling us Cowboy Mo and Cowboy Joe stories, probably why I love the acoustic guitar so much. We spent time with his parents and siblings and our cousins swimming and fishing in Lake Latawana. We even made a movie once called The PJ Strangler. My dad was, and honestly still is, a big kid whose smile and laugh are contagious. My dad chose to move to another state several years after the divorce. The visits became rare and eventually stopped. It was weird, and yet it was also very quickly normalized by the adults around us. As a kid, I felt confused about it. I was filled with sadness and anxiety, waiting and wanting to hear from him which we did on occasion, but very rarely. I eventually married in my late 20s and became a parent, which made it even harder for me to understand how he chose to walk away from his children. I continued to see my dad every few years, but for me, the relationship with my dad was emotionally draining and painful. And then about six years ago, I began the hard work of learning to love myself. And just a few years into that, I found myself working in Atlanta, Georgia, which is where my dad lived and still lives. I felt fortunate to be able to stay with him and his wife, Lucy. It gave me an opportunity to have many very late night conversations with my dad, many open conversations about his why and his difficult decision to move away. Maybe I wouldn't have made those same choices, and maybe I would have if I were in his shoes. I'll never know. But either way, I have what I consider to be a good relationship with my dad these days. I've forgiven. I've let go of what I needed to let go of in order to heal me. Today, we call when we think of each other, and neither of us has any guilt around not calling on a regular basis. We laugh, we reminisce, and we talk about all his great grandbabies and of course, his crazy list of inventions. In the last few years, he began his battles with Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, which makes me extremely grateful for the opportunity I had to heal the relationship with my dad. I will forever be grateful to the universe for bringing us together at just the right time. And yes, I know not everyone will have an opportunity like mine. And I also know some have no desire whatsoever to have a relationship with their fathers. So how does one deal with Father's Day when one is in pain? I found an article in Psychology Today by Timothy Rice, MD, who's an adult and child and adolescent psychiatrist and psychoanalyst. He shared four steps for those in pain who want to have a healthier experience this Father's Day. Step one, accept your father's negatives. If you have mixed memories of your father, 
you may feel pressure both internally and externally to brush aside the pain and focus on the positive, but you don't need to abandon the past hurts. Past hurts actually feel more authentic to you than those vague, happy memories you're trying to resuscitate. Instead of hiding the pain, allow yourself some space to simply not enjoy. Step two, gain perspective on your father's own experience. After validating the negatives, think about whether your father did his best with what he had available and place the downsides into the context of his own upbringing and life. Typically, we view our fathers as authorities, yet every father is really just another person like the rest of us. The late psychoanalyst and social worker Selma Freyberg promoted the concept of intergenerational transmission of trauma, in which the hurts of parents continue on into their children. While you can feel hurt for the way these ghosts can be passed down, take into context that the struggle you may have had with your father is the same struggle he may have had with his own parents. Step three, acknowledge your father's positives. While you should acknowledge and accept your father's negatives, an important step to a healthier Father's Day is to also find the positives no matter how small. Did you learn an important lesson from your father? Can you recall any warm feelings you shared with your dad? Did he have a particular talent you admire? One important developmental task of adulthood is to live with appreciation and disappointment side by side. Bring to light your bag of mixed emotions. Give yourself some credit and permit yourself to feel both bad and good at the same time. Step four, do something. Maybe even call your dad. Father's Day is well set up for new beginnings. Take the opportunity to share something loving with your father without internally feeling the need to do injustice to your own complex feelings. If your father lives nearby, perhaps send him an email and invite him out for coffee. If your state's away, set up a time to talk with him via phone, FaceTime, or WhatsApp. If it feels more comfortable, pick up the phone and just call on Father's Day. If you do connect, say hello and share whatever you are feeling. Reflect on the negatives. Recognize that you are entitled to your feelings and allow yourself the space to feel a range of feelings. You need not experience only the positive. Allow yourself to connect. Say hello and just accept whatever you are feeling. Your father may not respond at all. He may not return your email or answer your call. This may simply be a matter of bad timing, but he may be actively stating he does not want to speak. Keep in mind, fathers have their own uncomfortable feelings that arise on Father's Day. Timothy adds, while the holiday is called Father's Day, it is also a day for the child. Do what feels right for you. While you may not be truly celebrating your father, coming to terms with your relationship is an opportunity. I also found this. The Fatherhood Project, a nonprofit fatherhood program, seeking to improve the health and well-being of children and families by empowering the fathers to be knowledgeable, active, and emotionally engaged with their children, researched the specific impacts of father engagement during the different childhood development stages. Here are 10 important facts that were collected during their research. One. Fathers and infants can be equally as attached as mothers and infants. When both parents are involved with the child, infants are attached to both parents from the beginning of life. 
two, father involvement is related to positive child health outcomes in infants, such as improved weight gain in preterm infants and improved breastfeeding rates. Three, father involvement using authoritative parenting, which is loving and with clear boundaries and expectations, leads to better emotional, academic, social, and behavioral outcomes for children. Four, children who feel a closeness to their father are twice as likely as those who do not to enter college or find stable employment after high school. 75% less likely to have a teen birth, 80% less likely to spend time in jail, and half as likely to experience multiple depression symptoms. Five, fathers occupy a critical role in child development. Father absence hinders development from early infancy through childhood and into adulthood. The psychological harm of father absence experienced during childhood persists throughout the life course. Six, the quality of the father-child relationship matters more than the specific amount of hours spent together. Non-resident fathers can have positive effects on children's social and emotional well-being as well as academic achievement and behavioral adjustments. Seven, high levels of father involvement are correlated with higher levels of sociability, confidence, and self-control in children. Children with involved fathers are less likely to act out in school or engage in risky behaviors in adolescence. Eight, Children with actively involved fathers are 43% more likely to earn A's in school and 33% less likely to repeat a grade than those without engaged dads. Nine, father engagement reduces the frequency of behavioral problems in boys while also decreasing delinquency and economic disadvantage in low-income families. 10. Father engagement reduces psychological problems and rates of depression in young women. Overall, the impact that fathers and father figures can make is substantial. Just as there are many positive aspects to father involvement, the effects of father absence can be detrimental as well. I think Father's Day is also an opportunity for us, the adult children, to reflect on what fathering means to us. It's an opportunity to break those transgenerational trauma bonds that we continue to pass down generation to generation. It's an opportunity for us to create new and beautiful father-child relationships. Well, that's it for me today. A happy Father's Day to all the father figures and fathers of human children and non-human critters in their care. Thanks again for tuning in and listening. If you enjoyed today's podcast, please take a moment to like, subscribe, and share. I greatly appreciate your support. Stay safe and stay curious, my friends. 